hello, everybody, and welcome to Stanford. We are, as Margot said, really thrilled to have you here. And I have to say, it is really just fantastic to uh, look out in the room and see a room full of women. Um, I also have to think back to five years ago. And Margo, one of the differences, I want to know if you agree, there are actually more men in the audience now. I think they were a little afraid five years ago, maybe. But anyway, so I want to welcome the men in the audience, too. Uh, allies are great. Um, this conference is, I think, a great indication, as Margot has shared, of how the interest in the field of data science has grown and grown among women. Uh, when, when I think back to that first conference in 2015, uh, when I made those opening remarks, I had no idea that Margot and her colleagues were starting a movement. Uh, but clearly, there was a hunger for it, and it has been, it is just awesome to see how it has grown. In just five years, WIDS has expanded from what was a local Stanford conference uh, that was live streamed to a really global event with the 200 conferences around the world. And of course, the field of data science has also expanded in the last five years. Uh, more and more decisions, good and bad, are made based on data analysis, analysis that is good and bad. And one of the challenges is uh, separating those. Um, but things like precision medicine, understanding and targeting retail, retail customers much more successfully than I wish they did, monitoring financial markets, predicting the weather, and elections, of course. The uh, new insights available from big data have made data science an exciting and important field to be in right now. And I'd say that's, a, that's another difference from five years from, ago. Five years ago, yeah, data science. Now it's, wow, data science. Now, all of this means that uh, diversity in data science is actually more important now than it was even five years ago. And I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about what I mean about that. Um, why is diversity important? If you step back uh, and try to address that issue, you, it's really important to be able to say why in research and education, in any field, why is diversity important? And we've spent a lot of time thinking about that at Stanford and discussing it. Um, I think we've made some strides at Stanford to become a bit more diverse, di diverse inclusive, and accessible. But we, we need to do more, and that's where answering that why question can be very powerful. It is just very, very important, and I'm going to stress this for each of you, to be able to clearly articulate why diversity and inclusion are critical to our research and education mission. So I'm going to give you my version on this. You will each have separate versions. Um, the first reason for me is at Stanford, promoting diversity ensures intellectual strength. To solve complex problems, discover break, scientific breakthroughs, achievements in the arts, whatever it is, you have to bring a broad range of ideas and approaches. And to advance our educational mission, it is essential to be exposed to views or cultures that are different from your own and have your opinions and assumptions challenged. An institution or enterprise that reflects broad diversity will inspire new angles of inquiry, new modes of analysis, new discoveries, new solutions. So that's one reason diversity is important in my articulation. The other is that the future is diverse. Our world is becoming increasingly complex, more interconnected. To be fully engaged citizens in the 21st century, we need to embrace diversity in all aspects of life not just in the workplace, not just on a campus. We need to be able to navigate difference, develop empathy, value our engagement with diverse backgrounds and perspectives. The challenges we face now and in the future transcend all borders, all genders. We must be sure that solutions we develop address the needs of all people and incorporate input from all communities. Diverse teams are a critical path to embracing that diverse future. And the time is right now for the field of data science, because data analysis can be applied in so many different areas and in so many different ways. Diversity is critical. And you're the experts. You know 
how easy it is to take data and use it incorrectly because you started with a bias or you started with an with a adversely selected sample. As the world becomes more data driven, there will be increased opportunities and demand for data science scientists, and we have to remove the barriers that exist for participation. We can't afford to exclude talent. So as you all know, women can and do excel in data science, despite what are all too common and very unfortunate beliefs by some that women and girls do not have what it takes in STEM subjects. And that, of course, has been debunked in many studies, but those prejudices still exist. We need to expose and counteract those biases about girls and women and their abilities. They are especially pernicious for young women growing up, girls, and we need to get them interested in science at an early age. They need to see role models. You've all heard, you can't be what you can't see. The overall number of women undergraduates in STEM subjects is increasing. That's very encouraging, but there are still large disparities for women entering these fields professionally. And women leave their STEM-based careers at a much higher rate than men. They are often in male-dominated workplaces. They find themselves not fully integrated, accepted, promoted, included. That means we need to make improvements to the workplace, all workplaces, and I'm going to include here at Stanford as well, to create more welcoming and equitable environments for women. And we all need to continue to seek support from and provide support for each other. So this conference showcases outstanding work by some remarkable women. There are many role models to be found here today and at WIDS nationwide and worldwide. If I had a hope for this conference, it will be that it continues to inspire more women to get involved in data science and that it continues to create networks of support to keep more women in the field. So before I just wrap up, I want to thank the organizers of Women in Data Science, Margot, Karen, and Judy. Please join me in thanking them. And I'd like to thank the sponsors, Stanford Data Science Institute, ICME, the Stanford President's Office, and the Women in Data Science's Industrial Partners. So make the most of your time here today. Come away informed, connected, and inspired. Thank you. Thank you, Persis. Don't go just yet. OK. Because I want to ask you a question. Sure. You know, you have been, as the Dean of the School of Engineering mm -hmm. and now as Provost, for quite some time now, right at the forefront mm -hmm. of data science here in the Valley. Mm -hmm. So before you go, tell me, what is your deepest fear and what is your fondest hope when it comes to data science? It's one of the themes we have at this conference. Yeah. So deepest fear is unfortunately easy to call up. And that is, so I'm old, right? You're all mostly younger than I am. <laughs> and so I, I, I was a graduate student in the 80s and uh, I remember that world, and I remember what people could say. They weren't bad people, they didn't know what they were saying, but there was a, um, a discourse and a narrative and a conversation that uh, was really not very supportive of women uh, and did create what we would now call a hostile environment. I mean, I didn't particularly think it was hostile at the time because I didn't know any better, but we've learned a lot since then. And then I've watched progress where you can't control what somebody thinks, but you can make it unacceptable to say certain things. And that worked pretty well, and it's made the environment more inclusive and more welcoming, and I've seen more women coming into the field. And in the last decade, maybe even the last five years, it has become acceptable to say things that I thought had been agreed upon as unacceptable decades ago. And that I, I find deeply, deeply disturbing. So that's the greatest fear is that we can't put, the, you know, I want to put that genie back in the bottle where it belongs 
and uh, and and I'm 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 nervous. I'm worried about what's happened in the in the dialogue in our country. So that's the greatest fear. Greatest hope for data science. Greatest hope. Wow. Apart from, of course, that 50% of the leaders in yeah, data science are going to be women. Absolutely. But that that will come, and it'll probably solve the problems. But um, <laughs> it's. So I, I think that my greatest hope for data science is to develop the uh, framework and a culture to keep data from being misused. <laughs> I think I'm gonna, I mean, I got up on the wrong side of the bed this morning because both of those have a slight negative tinge to them, but <laughs> it's that right now, I mean, data and the use of data is so powerful and we learn so much from it. But as I said earlier, each of you knows how easy it is to misuse data. So how do we develop the cultures and the frameworks uh, so that data can be shared and used appropriately and positively and uh, mitigate the negatives? Every new invention, every new technology has good sides and bad sides. It's the culture of the field that helps us use, use it for good and, um, and contain its use for, for bad, and that's something that, that this field, uh, that's a challenge you need to take on, and my hope is you get it right. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Persis, for you. coming and opening <laughs> us. my pleasure. <laughs> I was going to give you a hug. And I will see you in five years. In five years, you bet. I'll be here. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Thanks again. Persis Rell, Provost of Stanford University. Yeah.